Let's create the spline IK spine. Uh, there is a handout that comes with this, and you can follow along with that, though I may jump around a little bit in it. There are several things that I want to cover. Um, one is just to show you how to create the spline IK, and then how to apply it with a character, and then more specifically, how to apply it manually to a character. We're going to demonstrate the differences between FK bones and spline IK. First, we'll create the FK bones, which is just the standard way we've been creating bones throughout the entire class. Now, with spline IK bones, you'll note that we have to change where it says the IK solver to spline IK solver, and then check on assign to children and make sure the other checkbox is also on. Then we create the spline IK bones the same way. However, when we right click to finish, you'll notice a new window open that is the spline IK solver. I'm going to name my IK, and then you'll notice that we have a number of spline knots. And those equal the number of bones that I have created, including the nub. Most of the time, you do not need that many knots. The knots will be the controls that you use. So I'm going to drop it down a little bit. So you'll see several knots or small blue squares that have been created. Let's compare on how the two different bone systems move. As with normal, the FK bones rotate only their child. Movement, though we would rarely do that, moves the parent in a rotation manner. With spline IK bones, we control the splines completely with the knots or the little point helpers um, that are represented as, as boxes here. And you can see it's a very, very flexible spine. You can do some very interesting things with the animation of this. So let's move on to creating this uh, type of system for an actual character. So we'll go over into the left view, and we'll note that right now in creating this, it's a little bit difficult because our hand is sort of in our way. So we're going to use something called viewport clipping to clip away. Now again, this does not affect the mesh. This is just showing us what we see. So you can see it's clipping away part of the mesh. Think of it as the camera is only visible between those two arrows. We'll go ahead and make our character see-through and frozen. And we'll start and create our spline IK spine. So we start at the bottom. And as in the past, we're going to make the three small joints on the bottom, and then one big rib cage. The new window opens, and we want to rename, and then consider the number of knots. And there are four right now, actually five, and, uh, but we only need three in the areas I've indicated. And there the knots have been controlled. I'll move it out of the body so that we can see what happens. So that is the root. The top one enables some very nice bending. And the middle one also provides that as well. So this is what, in the handout, we've covered uh, all the way through um, to creating the spline um, with the control knots, is what they're called. And make sure that you're naming your bones. Now, I want to show how to create the spline IK manually. The advantage of this is that you're able to put the knots exactly where you want them to be. 
So you're going to create your bone system. Instead of with spline IK, you're going to create them with the FK spline, sort of the standard way of creating bones. Nice thing about this is that if we needed to, we could edit our bones for length and size and shape before making it into a spline IK. Naming my bones, including a pelvis. So the spines will be named bone spine 01, 02, 03, 04, and then spine, bone spine nub. And the last bone is named pelvis nub. So our next step in creating a manual spline is to create the actual spline or line that uh, will control the bones. And the important thing about this is that the uh, point that uh, you want the root should be where you start and uh, then where every knot you want to appear is where a vertex is. So I'm making them smooth and adjusting them into position where I want the knots to specifically appear. Now just like any other IK, um, we're going to say animation IK solver, spline IK solver with our root bone, selecting our nub, and you'll notice though we still have we still have to choose something else, and the computer is telling us to choose another spline to finish the spline IK, and so we choose that spline. And there you see our knots have been created just as before, but this time we had manual control over that. So now what we want to do is we want to create some control objects because we don't actually want to use those point helpers um, but actually some control objects as we've been doing throughout the entire rig. So I'm going to turn off viewport clipping and create some control objects using a circle Converting it to edible spline, adjusting its viewport settings so it's a little lower and takes up less memory, selecting it on a spline level, not an object level, and cloning the splines to make a little gyro shape. It helps to have angle snap on to make it look a little bit nicer. Naming this control, and then we'll make several copies of it uh, in, so that we can use them later. We'll rename a couple to use in the spline. So spline middle or top or bottom, whatever you want to name them. In the handout, I believe they're referred to just as control 1, 2, 3, etc. We're going to take these controls and align them to their appropriate knots.
then we'll take those controls because they're no good inside of our character and move them back outside of the character. Now we will take those specific point helpers or knots and link them to their associated controls. And you can see that they work just as if we were moving the knots themselves. Let's move on and create our neck bone and our head bone as well as the head nub. Make sure we name them. Bone head. Bone neck. We're aligning it into the top of the spine nub just to see if our bones are too long or too short. And you can see in this instance, my neck is a little short, or sorry, a little long. So I'm using bone edit mode in the parent mode to adjust the lengths of those bones so as to get a better result. Make sure I exit edit mode and move my neck back off. Let's create some more controls. Use a circle. And then align the circle to the pelvis bone in the position only, not the orientation. This control is going to be the control waist. By moving this control, we should be able to move the entire upper body. So let's fix some of the linking. Let's link our two back controls into the control waist. Let's link the bottom not into the pelvis and then the pelvis into the waist control. If we grab the waist control and move it now, you'll see so far our entire rig follows it. The control of the knots still work. And if we grab our pelvis and move it we get a gyrating motion that gives us a very, very flexible bottom portion of our torso. We can also rotate that to get shifting of weight back and forth. We'll continue in the next video.